So, what is the radius about? Well, when you think radius, you automatically think circle. Not in our case. What we call radius is half the side of a square. When we say radius 50, for instance, we really mean a square with a side of 100 pixels. I've prepared the file to show you roughly what happens. Do you remember when I was suggesting that curving a certain selection in an image would allow you to maximize the contrast therein? It's more or less what Alce does, but it does it in an incredibly sophisticated way. In this file, I've created three layers containing checkers, which correspond to certain radiuses. Let's examine the size of the image first. Image menu, image size. There you are, about 1300 pixels wide and about 850 pixels high. Keep these figures in mind for now. If we imagine to cover the image with selections of radius 10, that is 20 pixels wide, this is how it would like. Please notice that each square over the leaves contains just a fraction of them. It would be impossible to encompass one leaf with one of these squares. Here's what the selections would look like at radius 50, that is 100 pixels wide. Still, each leaf contains more than one selection, but the area of each selection is much bigger. At radius 100, this is what would happen. A selection is roughly as large as a leaf. The difference between the leaf and its veins is mainly one of scale. If your aim is to enhance the veins, then you should realize that they belong to the fine details and that their variations occur over an area of one or a few pixels. If you choose a radius of 100 pixels, you'll be let down. But if you choose a radius of 100 pixels, you'll also be dealing with a much bigger area and you'll actually be able to reallocate the luminosity structure of the leaves as objects and the veins will be largely ignored. We call the fine detail high frequency and the large structure of luminosity low frequency. The larger the radius, the more you ignore the former and enhance the latter. Let's see how this translates in reality. I've prepared three layers treated with Alce at the aforementioned radii. This is 10 and you've already seen it. This is 50 and this is 100. Spot the difference, again, original, Alce 10, Alce 50, Alce 100. The two larger radii are not as impressive as radius 10 here, but they actually do something interesting. So, what radius will you use? It depends. You should first think how big is the detail you want to enhance. It will take you a while to be able to guess correctly, but this is roughly similar to the choice of the radius in the unsharp masking technique. And, very important, you may ask yourself why, a few minutes ago, the result of radius 50 on this same picture in grayscale was so incredibly impressive, and here it is, well, different. Well, the simple answer is, I cheated. It's not the same picture. This one was rescaled to one-third with respect to the previous version. So, the relative size of the objects in pixels is different. A radius of 50 there is equivalent to a radius of about 17 here. And indeed, radius 10 is much closer to that result than radius 50. So, two rules. First, consider how big your image is. Second, consider how big your areas of interest are within the image. I would like to address an issue which has been discussed a lot. That is, I would like to reply to the question, does Alce desaturate colors? There are two seemingly contradictory answers to this, although they are both absolutely correct, and they are. In fact, not. Perceptively, sometimes. Let me show you an example. I've chosen this photograph because it isn't certainly short of colors. This is the original, and on the top layer I've put an Alce processed version with radius 50. 
As you see, there is a serious impression that a lot of color was lost along the way. That is, the Alcha version looks less vivid than the original. You'll be very surprised when I show you the middle layer then. It contains the color of the processed version and the luminosity of the original. As I turn it on, you would expect to see a less colorful version. Alas, not. I can't perceive any difference, and if there's any, I would consider it completely irrelevant. So, why does the original Alcha layer look less saturated than the unprocessed image? The answer is, it's a side effect of the reallocation of luminosity. The saturation undergoes a perceptual change because there are lighter and darker areas which force us to believe we are looking at a different color. But from a practical point of view, this is not true. Our advice is simple. If you like the result you obtain, don't do anything. Otherwise, if you feel you need a bit more vivid colors, just open a hue saturation adjustment layer and push up the middle slider, that is saturation, a bit. How much? Very difficult to say, plus 10 might be a good starting point. Yet, it will be too much in some cases and too little in others. By all means, let your eyes be the judge. We also suggest that you do not pre-saturate, that is, do not use hue saturation before Alce, because in very vivid pictures this may kick some of your colors out of gamut and cause unpleasant artifacts. Alce should come first, and a little makeup might then come after, if it's at all needed.